I feel like everybody goes through their little stages, you know, where they want money and they're desperate for money, you feel what I'm saying? And they're down bad for money. But I have never seen yet in my whole 19 years of living anybody as down bad as the Island Boys, fam. What I've been hearing and seeing of these people, yeah, I can't lie, fam. These Island Boys are looking at the incest boys. It's your boy, Loma, you know what I'm saying? Loma, grab Loma, talk. Loma's got a reaction, 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 you know what I'm trying to say, fam. Guys, the Island Boys are desperate in a blood clot. From what I've been seeing of these, man, is nasty. I've been seeing a whole heap of foolishness all over my For You page, all over my Twitter. I'm seeing these, man, are lipsing up each other and all that nastiness. Like, how you going to do that to your brother, fam? Your own blood, blood. <laughs> your own blood blood i right, listen yeah people if you enjoy this video yeah you haven't even watched the video to enjoy it listen yeah before we get to this video yeah hit that subscribe button hit that like button if you like seeing clips like this yeah make sure you follow the twitch all right then without further ado people let's get straight into the reaction the island boys inner clout goblin has infected their minds and it's shocking they've been engaging in provocative displays of affection for me on the screen now i want a blood clout i go on yeah don't ever show me that shit blood why for that where did wife for that even come from, blood? That ain't no, that ain't no Jamaican song, car, blood. I never heard that growing up. You know wife for that? You know that word wife for that? I never heard that growing up, fam. You get me? I never heard my peoples or my family members say wife for that. That must be some new song. You get me? But yeah, blood. I want a blood clot to go on, yeah? Don't ever show me that chitty shit, blood. And listen, yeah, we don't discriminate around there, but that's nasty, blood. I don't want to see two brother kiss up and kiss up. The blood they need, they need to seek god blood resorted to incredibly desperate and degenerate measures in an attempt to stay relevant on, because up, just brother. two years prior they were raking in millions of dollars buying expensive don't jewelry and flexing their extra no 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 i'm actually like gobsmacked but don't ever show me that blood how are you gonna show me that in the first 10 seconds of the video blood ryan pictures you need to get that picture out of my head fam about. You can't show me that in the first 10 seconds. I want a blood clot. Bring in lifestyles. However, they're now submerged in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt with no views and no future. On the surface, the island boys are all glitz and glamour, often seen in luxury cars and flaunting a good life on social media. But if we take a closer look, a completely different picture emerges. According to their manager, the island boys were not as rich as they acted. In fact, well, they were broke. Because in reality... Well, obviously, but come on now. Like, it's not rocket science to know that. You get me? It's not rocket science to know that they were never rich. Like, ugh, this is the thing. Because I'm an influencer. Well, I said influencer. That sounds so cringe. Ugh, I called myself an influencer. Ugh. But because I'm a content creator and I've been doing this for a couple of years now, like, I know how this thing works, fam. Like, I'm not even trying to be a pocket watcher, but I know who's really making bread and who ain't making bread, fam. Trust me, fam. If someone here is only getting views off TikTok, they haven't got a YouTube channel, they haven't got, like, nothing else, just TikTok. Nine times out of ten, fam, their brock pocket or they're not as rich as you think, blood. You get me? Or they probably just got a little bit of dough in their pocket, bro. They're not rich or nothing like that, though. Like, these niggas never had no YouTube channel. You get me? These men were collecting views for free on TikTok, blood. You get me? Views for free, bro. You know what I'm trying to say, bro? So it's like, fam, they never had no substance or nothing. They never had no fan base. And their music weren't paying them. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, to get paid off music here, you have to be a big artist, you know? You know what I'm trying to say? You can't be no Highland boy. <laughs> Most of these outward displays of wealth are simply a facade. Many of the cars they pose in are rented, the expensive looking items merely leased, and the penthouses or villas are not owned, but borrowed or rented for video shoots. They didn't have the money. In fact, they owed a lot of it, and it was costing them. Right now, th there's no more money coming in. Like, right. I know for sure. And like people think they got millions of dollars, they don't. Following those relevations, the hype eventually that, started to fade. They found unconventional and often shocking ways to keep the spotlight on them. One of their most controversial stunts recently involved them kissing each other on camera. Me no want to see this man. Bro, not don't, eh, bro, why are you playing the full jam clip? Me no want to see them kiss no boy. Me no want to see two brother kiss blood. I don't want to see that shit blood. Don't show me two brothers kissing blood. I don't want to see that fam. All right then. Two actual brothers, you know, blood brothers. I don't want to see them kiss blood. How about, are you just paying the clip, clip so freely like that? You get me? Why have you even got them, bro, deep? The person who made this video had to edit it. So he's got them files on his on his hard drive. You got them files on your hard drive, blood? No, sir. Man said you got Phineas and Ferb lips in each other. <laughs> I think it's a firm attack used that actually look like that dog kind of lie. Certainly the kind they might have wanted. The brothers defended their act as a non-sexual expression. Still, many couldn't overlook the eyebrow-raising front of two tones kissing so passionately. Another avenue they explored to maintain relevance was by creating an OnlyFans account, a platform known for its explicit content. Promoting it by using controversial means me helped them boost their subscriber count, but at the cost of triggering adverse reactions. Their manager even alluded to the possibility of them being gay, further adding to the intrigue. 
Island right. Boys got kidnapped. You told me they was yeah, doing right. some sus shit in the room that one day. Niggas was touching each other's penises. Yeah, or I don't even want to. Wait, like... what? But again, this approach generated more controversy than approval, leading to questions about their desperation to stay relevant. However, making out with each other was not the only degenerate act they committed, as it was revealed that they had a history involving the law. It was news no one expected to hear. I'm just Frankie, start looking at me, also known as Kodiak Red, had been arrested for domestic violence. Yeah, I know, but I didn't do nothing, bro. Listen, these are the allegations she made against me. Bro, no, what allegation? Bro, I put this on God. I put this on God, bro. According to Frankie's girlfriend, they argued at the pool of their Airbnb after she threatened to break up with him due to his physically abusive behavior. Frankie allegedly struck her across the face and shoved her into the shallow part of the pool, subsequently resulting in her hitting her chin on the concrete floor below. Police noticed the body markings matching her description and took Frankie into custody before releasing him 24 hours later. He took to Instagram to announce his release with a caption to defend himself. Free now. Missed everybody. Is not what it seems, y'all. Love and peace and prosperity. That what life is about. 24 hour lockdown and fighting demons. Nobody cared, now they do. This incident with the oh, law coupled with Island Boys fans. Like dead ass. Down and fighting I demons. Hate, bro. Nobody cared, fans, bro. now they do. This incident with the law coupled with their controversial online behavior has led many to view the Island Boys negatively. You it tarnished what? their image. I'm and not even gonna look away no more. I'm just gonna watch blood because fam, at this rate, fam, he keeps he keeps catching me off guard, fam. I might as well watch it, you know, like that. <laughs> that sounds crazy made their climb back to relevancy even more challenging, making their claim of living the good life harder to swallow. Because how could they claim to be so successful and fulfilled when engaging in behavior that leads to legal consequences? The Island Boys were also involved in multiple public scandals and gossip regarding their behavior. Notably, they were observed at a Jake Paul boxing match against Tyron Woodley, throwing their shoes and spitting at spectators. These disgraceful behaviors provoke such an adverse reaction. Uh, fam, to spit at someone, you have to be... Oh. You have to, bro, listen, you actually have to be a tramp for that, you know. I'll be real, bro, listen, I'll be so real, fam. To spit at someone, that's wild, fam. To spit at someone, wild. Throwing their shoes and that's spitting nasty, at spectators. You know? These disgraceful behaviors provoke such an adverse reaction that they were booed and had objects thrown at their head, prompting security to escort them out of the arena. In the aftermath of these incidents, the public perception of the duo changed drastically. The boys were increasingly viewed as laughing stock rather than celebrated figures. But why were they acting like this? Why were they so hated and laughed at? Well, it wasn't just because of their money troubles and law problems, it also had much to do with their talent in the music industry, or rather, lack thereof. Because to many, their instant fame seems somewhat unjustified, going viral overnight not for any particular talent or creative output, but for a freestyle that many found cringeworthy. The perception of them as talentless idiots exploiting social media algorithms for their own gain didn't sit well with the masses. Sustaining their fame and relevancy hinged on building a loyal fan base, an uphill task without any quality music. It's one thing for people to view their content for amusement, but quite another for them to become true fans of their music. Most accomplished musicians are recognized for their talent, dedication, and constant strive for improvement. However, the Island Boys seem disinterested in honing their craft. Their music seems simplistic, repetitive, and needed more meaningful content. Bro, their music's dry, blood. You get me? No one, nobody in the whole earth, yeah, listens to Island Boys and has never half blood, like religiously. I don't think Island Boys is like a religious fan out there, blood. You know what I'm trying to say, fam? So it's like, of course, blood, of course, no one's gonna listen to them. That's why they might have to kiss each other, fam, for peace, respectfully. Their perception grew that they were more engrossed in flamboyant displays rather than in producing quality music. As a result, their lack of musical talent started to become glaringly obvious. They were unable to retain their fan base or attract new followers. As their fame began to wane, their efforts to stay relevant increasingly seemed like desperate grasps at straws. Despite their shortcomings and a trail of controversies, the Island Boys held on to their dream of making a fortune from their music, merchandise sales, and brand partnerships. Who the hell was buying Island Boy merch? Who was buying that shit, bud? Who was buying Island Boy merch, fam? Like, dead ass. Like, oh my gosh, fam, like. However, their revenue fell far, far below their expectations. In addition, their inadequacies were not only confined to the recording studio, because their live performances have also attracted heavy criticism. Their lack of rhythm, pitch, and overall stage presence rendered their shows far from captivating, leading to instances of them being booed off stage, further eroding their credibility as serious artists. An infamous incident was at a club where the audience chose to talk amongst themselves, completely ignoring the Island Boy's presence on stage.
However, their arrogance and lack of humility in the face of criticism was another significant impediment to their success, further distancing them from potential fans. Because instead of taking critique constructively or showing any signs of growth, the brothers typically reacted with dismissive or aggressive behaviors. This refusal to absorb criticism and learn from it only reinforced their image of them being immature, entitled, and lacking self-awareness. Far from taking this feedback and employing it for self-improvement, they shrugged it off. They acted like they were on top of the world, like they didn't need to change. There was a glaring disparity between the persona they strive to project and their actual reality. Because while they sought to be perceived as successful artists, they needed to invest the required effort to truly become one. The more they disregard the criticism, the more precarious their situation grew. Because according to their manager, they had a chance to make something of their fame, to use it to build a career. But instead, they let their egos get in the way. They were too proud to admit their mistakes and too stubborn to change. A notable instance nah, was their- them man have no talent fam, you get me? Was get in the way. They were too proud to admit their mistakes and too stubborn to change. A notable instance was their infamous interaction with George Janko on the Impulsive Podcast. In the episode, Janko offered them sound advice about leveraging their virality into a sustainable career and investing their money in wiser purchases to prevent their financial situation from returning to its state a few years back. This resulted in the Island Boys taking offense to George's advice and walking off the podcast, believing they had no saying merely because George makes less money than them. God forbid it doesn't go in your guys' direction, for real. I think you guys take all of your jewelry assets and invest it in something, so you guys will never ever be broke again. George, stop talking. We have multiple- <laughs> Wait, that was- oh. Hey, that was, that was nah, for you doing, guys. Yeah, you, you That wasn't like a hate I don't, shot. I don't I don't need, I don't yeah. need financial yeah, advice when I probably make more money than you for a second. Hey, I, hold on. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, hold on. Podcast. No. Here, I'm moving for you. I was giving you nice advice, bro. I, I agree with that. However, unfortunately for I the know, island boys. Yeah, with the island boys were like, oh yo, you know I'm fucking in it. Who calls himself fucking like what? What do you mean you know I'm fucking? Because George eventually turned out to be entirely right. The Island Boys will never recover from reportedly making over fifty thousand dollars a month to now being in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt with no more income streams. Especially since one of the representatives has filed a lawsuit because the boys had never paid the money they owe. Perhaps if their music contained some innovation, they would still have a chance at reviving the career. However, they realized too heavily on their viral fame, not realizing that novelty wears off rapidly in the fast-paced world world of social media. To stay relevant, you must constantly evolve, adapt, and bring something new to the table. The public's reaction to the Island Boy's music had been, in a word, unforgiving. Their song, I'm an Island Boy, while initially generating significant buzz due to its arguably catchy and repetitive tune, soon became the source of jokes online. TikTok users didn't hold back from ridiculing their songs, tattoos, haircuts, and general appearance. They freely parodied the song, contributing to a stream of memes that predominantly served to mock rather than praise the twins' musical efforts. I'm an island boy, and I'm trying to make it. Oh, I'm an island boy. I'm an island boy. Doing Notably, even prominent figures in the music industry have expressed their criticism of the island boy's musical abilities. In one occurrence, they were openly ridiculed by Snoop Dogg and Kevin Hart. I'm a just island boy. I'm a just island boy. I'm a gay I'm speechless. <laughs> Two goofballs in the pool. Fly Soldier retaliated to the mockery by threatening Snoop Dogg, vowing to beat his ass on sight. Listen, if Snoop Dogg would have said that to me in real life, on sight I would have faded. I would have beat his ass. On everything, I swear to God, my life, I would. The struggle of the Island Boys to convert their online fame into genuine respect or appreciation emphasizes the stark truth that viral popularity doesn't guarantee enduring success. Their bro, music's lack of hair actually looks like the torches of Minecraft, though. Like that's what I'm like, bro. Nah, fam. Innovation and refusal to accept constructive feedback has cast a shadow over their potential to build a sustainable career out of their initial viral fame. The Island Boys find themselves at crucial crossroads. Will they evolve, take on feedback, and focus on building their music career with sincerity and humility? Or will they continue down a path that might alienate potential fans? Oh, fam, the, from bro, from when my man here is kissing up his own brother, yeah, like I'll be real, it's over for them, man. But anyway, though, people, let me know what you like think about the island boys. Let me know if you think them man are tripping. You get me, them man are tripping, boys. You get me, all oh, right. Then. But anyway, though, people, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Without further ado, speak your boy, love me, boy, love, 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 love,